you going to intro? Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, camp followers. Hope you're all well. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, I'm Nikki, and this evening I'm really excited to be talking to Catherine Jones. Um, she's come on to talk to us this evening about man training. Um, I don't know how many people have heard about man training before. For me, it's a very new subject, it's a very new topic. I don't know very much about it at all. So I'm really excited to learn more about it. And um, we asked Catherine on because we're always talking about exercise in arthritic dogs and how we know how important exercise is. We don't want to be doing um, uh, high impact exercises or over exercising them, putting a lot of pressure on their joints. But on the flip side to that, we really do want to keep them exercising because we know how important that is and how important it is as part of the multimodal approach to managing arthritis. So um, we're going to learn more about um, man training. And if you have any questions as, you, as we go along, please do pop them into the comments. Or if you're already doing man training and have experience with it, please let us know because we'd love to hear from other people that already know something about it. So Catherine, um, would you like to introduce yourself please and tell us how you got into man trailing? What is it? Just tell us a little bit about it. Hi, um, I've been man trailing now for the last 18 months, uh, probably close to two years now really. Um, I'm one of the head instructors for man trailing UK. Um, I started off just getting into it something different to do with my dogs and then got absolutely hooked on it instantly realized that I couldn't get on with my local instructor for sessions so I joined another course and um, did my instructor course and I really haven't looked back it's been one of the best things I've ever done for me my dogs and just about my business and just taking the world forwards um I started off doing it with my my youngest uh, and one of my chefs my shepherd got fed up with it after a couple of sessions and he's just not super motivated but my springer loves it and I got another springer doing it and I got my um my retired security dogs doing it as a way to help them keep mobile causing too much issue on their joints because they're 10 and 6 and they do stuff but they don't want really to be doing anything high impact and for man training for them it's just amazing because we can do brain things without completely um, damaging their joints we've got one with quite severe arthritis and hip dysplasia and the other boys just just developing a little bit of arthritis as we go um mm. so it's been an absolutely great way to do it i started off just being an instructor and then came on one of the head instructors i'm also an assessor and um i host introductions and workshops all over the uk and just love doing man trailing <laughs> I know it sounds it sounds really interesting. So what exactly is man trailing? Because we hear it and you think actually before I looked into it a little bit, I had literally no idea what it was. So can you just give us a little picture of, of what it is? We have got a little video that we can show people as well. If you can just let us know how how would you describe man trailing? Man trailing, it's, it's hard. Everyone goes, what, what is man trailing when you introduce it? And people go, is it a dating website? It's not a dating website. Yeah. Um, what it is, is it's kind of a cross between hide and seek and what you would have a search and rescue dog do. And I always think of it's just like fun hide and seek for dogs. Um, what we're doing is teaching your dog to find a specific person's scent. So they're finding the person that's run off, usually with breakfast or tea or a good treat um, or just with favorite toys. And they've got to go, hey, that person's pegged off my breakfast. I'd like to get that. Hold me, they go around the corner. My visuals has gone. I've got to put my nose down. And all we're doing is harness that natural ability to use their nose. Whenever you've had your dog peer off to a rabbit, nose down, and you're shouting, Fire. and Fido's like, yeah, yeah, my nose is down, and I'm doing it. That's that's all we're harnessing. But we're doing it as a game for us. And we're just saying, hey, you can do it naturally. Could you just follow this specific person for us? We do it for fun. We do it absolutely it's all positive for the dog if the dog doesn't want to use its nose that's fine i've never yet had a dog that didn't go my goodness you want me to use my nose and you want me to find somebody you spent half your life telling me off facing rabbits um and what it does is just massively tap into that natural ability for the dogs we're not teaching them anything new all dogs can trail we're just saying could you find this person with your breakfast um and it just builds into this amazing thing that helps um release prey driving dogs if you've got a high prey drive dog it's great because they're just using 
in a really constructive way. If you've got a dog that likes to solve problems, it is amazing. If you've got a dog that wants to do something a bit different, it, it's fabulous. Yeah. But it's all about that scent. And you can literally trail for anybody, anywhere. Everybody has their own unique scent, and the dog is finding that. We think they're finding um, what we call skin rasps, which is our skin cells, which are constantly falling off us. Now, we can't prove that was educated guess um but i think we're also finding things like pheromones adrenaline and when you see the police dogs doing their thing and, and finding people that's it's the same thing um yeah we're just doing it in a fun way so basically it's just super cool hide and seek for dogs so what are they finding yeah, is it, it <laughs> they are they always finding a treat or as they sometimes finding people that they know very well that they know the scent of without having to use treats yeah. do you how, how do you start using it what do you use? We always take food where possible. So what we're doing is tapping into that that prey, like hunt, find, kill, eat. We just kill. We use food at the end. We tend to use wet food purely because when we get there, that licking in the wet food releases endorphins. And that's what they do naturally. They find the prey and eat the prey, which is usually how it woods um which is we all oh my god um but we can do it for toys i got one of my shepherds does it purely for toys and i do have one husky cross german shepherd that i mantra with that does it because she just likes finding people she just likes having a fuss um okay. so every dog's different they have a different motivation to do it but generally we we tend to use food just because it's the easiest thing to pass to other people with a toy what i find is not everybody plays in a really good way that your dog likes and they can be a bit disheartened if your dog that person doesn't play but yeah it's, some dogs will just find people they notice with other dogs just do it for the thrill of searching i find some of the very high drive dogs are like yeah yeah food at the end i'm not interested when are you going to hide again and they just look at the person like run off go on i want to find you yeah um, so it, it's really flexible it doesn't matter what your dog's motivation is there's yeah. no hard and fast rule with it and it means right. that we can be super flexible to each individual dog and handle a team so when you start um does the dog see that person run away or is the dog sort of hidden around somewhere while that person goes and hides do they actually see them run off so they know who they're yeah, trying to so find they, yeah so we, what we do is uh, I call it GNAP, but we 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 wind the dog the food. So we tend to show we got, and we get really excited, and that person, the runner or the missing person, yeah, around the corner and does you know, you're talking on the first session, maybe a 10 to 20 meter disappear around the corner, and the dog goes, Oh, they've gone my breakfast, they've seen them go, and then round that corner, ideally, they come around the corner and go, Oh, the person's gone. Oh, I'll have to put my nose down to find my food now. We make it super easy to start off with. We start a bit of visual because goes, I, I don't know what you're looking, what you're looking, what are you doing? I don't understand because it's very rare yeah. to hunt the person naturally. They're usually hunting something else. So yeah, it's visual to start off with. And then what we start to do is wean off using their eyes and start to use their nose. So initially they'll see the people go, we build up to the person's left of space behind and the dog goes, oh, I've got a sniff, follow that scent. Um, right. And again, we build this up each dog's pace. Some dogs get it absolutely instantly. Other dogs are like, there's a sock. What, what do you want me to do about it? And we yeah. build up um, with them individually. But yeah, they see the person run first. Okay. And so why, um, yeah, we, we're wanting to find lots of um, exciting and fun exercises for arthritic dogs and ones that are going to be safe for them. Um, so why do you feel, how do you feel uh, man trailing fits into that? How do you feel that it is good for um, arthritic dogs in particular? Because it's all at the dog's pace. Um, it's not high impact. We're not jumping. We're not running. Most dogs will kind of do a fast walk, maybe to a trot, but we'll do it at their pace. So we're not forcing them to run faster. We're not actively trying to pull them slower too much. I mean, some dogs need it, but we're not putting pressure on them to pay comfortable or, or not normal for them. Um, and I say there's, there's no jumping, there's no running, there's nothing high impact about it. It's okay. get from A to B at your own pace, at your own speed, and there's a good reward at the end of it. it there's, with the harness of dogs, which we do put a lot of emphasis on, like the harness have to fit the dogs. It's not just go and yeah. buy one from down the road. It is get harness that fits your dog. The pressure isn't put on 
you know, in one specific part of the body, the pressure on the harness is put all over the body so we can distribute the pressure and make sure that dog isn't putting loads of impact on their chest or their spine or their sternum. It's about dissipating that pressure on the line. The dogs are always on lead, so there's no opportunity for them to suddenly throw themselves at a car or jump at okay. a passing person. It's controlled mm. exercise um, all the time. So it's it's very well monitored and we, we don't push that dog into something it doesn't want to do or thinks yeah. it wants to do and then hurts itself. Yeah, yeah. So going on from that, um, obviously you need to have a good harness. What other kind of equipment might you need to get hold of for, for you and your dog? Is there anything else? Yeah, so literally man trailing, all you need is a well fit harness for your dog, ideally something that's a bit longer on the spine, not a you know a short, and not uh ideally a Y fronted harness rather than the flat ones because there's just too much pressure on the shoulders. Uh, mm. a long line, so a long lead. We I tend to recommend if you've got a strong dog, get yourself a rubber gripped one because you will absolutely love it. Um and you just need some pots to put some food in. That's all you need yeah. to start man trailing. You as an owner just need to be prepared to put waterproofs on, get out in all the weather and have some fun. But for most dogs, a harness and line is just all you get started and you don't need to go and buy the all singing or dancing one. What I tend to say to people, if you've got a well fit harness you your dog, brilliant. If you get hooked man trailing, then invest in a better trailing one that's more suited for a little bit of pull. But depending on your dog structure, and yeah. we have got other issues. We've got to take that into account with the design of everything we use. And there's lots of different ones on the market. And every instructor will kind of like tailor it to your dog. Yeah. So your instructor will give you a little bit of help with that. I mean, harnesses are things that we talk a lot about on CAM um, for various reasons. So yeah. um, uh, there'll be a lot of dogs that already have harnesses. And like you say, they can then talk to the instructor about how they need to be changed um, for for man training. Um, if that was somebody that something that somebody would be interested in. Um, yeah. So do you you have a whole range of dogs doing man training, do you? from Sort of young dogs is there an age limit a certain age yeah. that you you have to be what what's um the ages nope you can st there is there, it's one of those sorts where you have no minimum no maximum age um you can start a puppy as young as eight weeks i tend to unless it's my dog i'm starting um i i start my puppies after their second vaccinations i started my spring at 10 weeks old doing it um for just my other half of the garden hiding him uh, introductions I tend to see to about I don't know it's just so it's nice and confident um, yeah. with new places and things like that in terms of maximum age there isn't one if you want to start your dog at 10 years old man trailing fantastic um, but with puppies I just take a bit of what, where their confidence is if you've got a bit of a quiet puppy that's not sure I'm not going to dump it in a group setting no. of people running for it it's just going to be a bit much um, yeah but no, no minimum no maximum there's no breed we have one of the instructors has a miniature chihuahua cross uh, sorry a, a chihuahua miniature pincher that does it who is hilarious okay. trail, and he's really good at it but he's like this big and yeah. he's tiny the biggest dog i man trail with is a five kilo great dane and man trails really well and her owner is fantastic and just anchors on um but it's a fantastic sport for that great dane because it's not high impact on her. Various to see this dog yeah. around the corner. You go, oh my god, there's a great dane coming. Huge dog. Yeah. Uh, but we have everything in between. We have people do it with pugs, which people think, oh, it's a pug. They they totally use a nose. And yeah. obviously, we do a lot with the higher energy breeds like your Bridgers, Labradors, German Shepherds, Malinois. Like it, it really suits them. I could have yeah. a group of six people. I could have a crew, a Labrador, a German Shepherd. I had, a, I had a Newfoundland on an introduction course the other day, which was amazing, and she was so good at it. Um, and I mean, she did it at her own pace; it was nice and steady. But yeah. there's literally no restrictions on whatever breed or whatever size or age. Age just comes into it with the babies, just in case they're a little bit underconfident. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you um, what do you do? Uh, it sounds like you have several dogs all in in one group doing it. So, do you have uh, like four or five dogs looking for the same person or are they looking for different people each how does how does that work can you do one-on-one -on -one sessions what do you what normally happens so the way it works is we tend to have a group of five to 
six and dogs and what each dog is ran individually so we'll get a dog out and somebody in the group will run for that dog when i say run i mean we're not literally running it was just going high for the dog yeah. um we wanted that dog that person then go but i'll get my dog out so every dog is running for a different person in the group at a different time and we run each dog individually um the reason we do that is otherwise i can't really basically and you need making sure you're not making mistakes or to do health and safety if there's roads or danger we need to stop the dog um yeah. and what it also means it suits reactive dogs so we have a lot of reactive dogs come into man trailing that might normally bark at a person or a dog because we can work those dogs individually but with a group yeah. setting the dogs can have the fun but without having the stress of a dog barking to two cars down um, yeah. So it is a group event, but we work each dog individually and each handler individually. Um, okay. And what tends to happen is we we tend to trail for like two hours as a group and all the dogs get two or three trails. There's a resting in between, but they're not resting bored. They're waiting for the next turn. Yeah. So when you say say that, so each trail, um, they I guess they vary in length because it depends how how long it takes that particular dog to do that one because everyone's going to go at their own pace um, and you say sort of 20 to 30 meters away yeah. when when they get very good at it um how what kind of distances are you are you trailing uh, when when you get dogs that have are very experienced and very good at it so we want to build up to so there's different levels to you within man trailing uk and like the first level is a 400 meter trail um and we we so there's different things that can affect the trail. There's more distractions on trail, uh, and there's more duration. So a trail that's been aged half an hour, a trail that's 400 meters long, and then that trail might have two turns in it and five people standing on it. So we can build okay. different components within the trail as a dog learns. Um, what we tend to build up to is probably no more than a thousand meters, purely because we'll find somewhere to hide. Um, who's yeah. run off into somewhere to do it and it, that's very very complicated for dogs five minutes of doing a man and trailing is absolutely earth shattering for these dogs they're so tired because they're using their brain so much yeah. um so we don't tend to do loads and loads of long trails. We tend to complicate those trails and it's so we have to go and sit in the bush for half an hour so my poor my hat hooked man trailing people that get really into it i'm like bring a book bring a chair we're leaving yeah. this bush we can find you in half an hour um right. but it's, it's great i've had people go oh brilliant and then i just crack open a beer and have a, a, a you know and have fun with it but yeah so we yeah. can we can build the trails differently we start off with nice short easy trails the dog works and what we need to do is make sure has constant win the way we trail yeah. with man training uk and the reason that makes it so successful is that we use a method called the cocker method and that method is actually each trail is two trails you have the main trail which is your longer one that might be 400 meters 500 meters and directly after that trail we have a little short wind trail that's literally 10 meters max so the dogs always end on this super duper high so they have this really hard tra trail i've got some food at the end but actually you know that was really hard was it worth it they do a little super easy one for them and a dog goes oh my goodness that was so worth it this was amazing I do it again. And that's one again, of the reasons these dogs get so yeah because they all have a win no matter how hard their trail is yeah they have a win and it honestly the difference it sees in the dog induction courses if we have a nervous dog if we have a dog that's not sure of people if the dog is not sure of new environments by the time you've done that third main trail or basically on their sixth little trail mm -hmm. the dogs are different dogs i've never yet had a dog that didn't get the idea about a third trail mm. that's really good and i guess for arthritic dogs as well they're actually they like you say it's it's really hard work um it's brain power isn't it so it's not just the physical movements that they're doing they're getting that stimulation and we know that with a lot of arthritic dogs that they do have their down days and they you know, everyone has good and bad days dogs have good and bad days as well especially when they're arthritic and if they're yeah. doing if they have a day like that where they have they feel super good because they've done something great and they've seen this massive reward for it that's going to keep them going and it keeps them buzzing and and they look forward to the next time they're going to do it i guess as well it sounds ideal for for arthritic dogs 
Yeah, it's absolutely hilarious. I the dogs that are trailing longer, and they see me, they start screaming because they know we're going man trailing, oh. <laughs> and they have to see my if they can smell me. So if we're going somewhere, yeah. they, they get they stop, and that dog because they're using their nose, obviously, they can smell me. You'll hear them start kicking off in the vehicle. I'm like, oh, they know the man trailing. Um, oh. And these are dogs that don't get expert at things. Um, the best the best dog I ever trailed with it was he was a really damaged dog in terms of physically was um, an Australian Shepherd and he had a complete he had no hip joint in one side wow. because of um, a defect his other hip was quite severely damaged and he had arthritis over and he was only four and he's just oh. one dog that was just really broken and his own obedience with him that she normally did she couldn't do agility she couldn't do all these different things and he mm -hmm. came and the first time he did it he was like oh my goodness and you could just see his brain go oh, something i'm really really good at and i really really yeah. like and because he got so much reward out of the end of it he got off the harness one day by accident as she was putting harness on and he went and found the person by himself he, really? was, that excited. he was like bye i'm gonna find this person yeah and he got really so much proud of himself of it. every well. time i so I'm in the street, he just be like, oh my god, if we're going man training, are you gonna hide? Oh. And he'd look at me, I'm like, I'm not hiding. So well. He's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> but gave oh, that's so uh, sweet. Gave, gives all these dogs, no matter the breed or the temperament, just a really sweet outlet. And it's it's yeah. really nice to see these dogs get hooked on it. Yeah. But it's not one of those things that they've got to constantly do. They get, you don't do it for like two weeks. Don't go, oh, do I know how to man train? They'll just go, oh, goodness, yeah. we're doing this again, and want to come back out of the vehicle. Because like you say, it's a natural instinct to be able to do this in the first place. You're just kind of pointing them in the right direction to do it, aren't you? And giving them a safe place to do it. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple of questions. I'm just yeah. going to... We're not, we're not teaching them anything new. No. Um, I've, I've got, just before I lose these questions, so we're getting quite a few coming through now. Um, there's one, yeah. uh, just, to, just to reiterate with this, um, Katie's written um, that she doesn't use a harness for her German Shepherd. And is there any way that you can do man trailing off lead or is it always with a harness and lead? It's always with a harness and lead for that dog's safety. We don't do it off lead because we're, a lot of places are places. And we one, you can't outrun your dog. So dog runs off to find a person and you're 200 meters behind it's just a recipe for disaster so that's why they're always on lead and the reason we always use a harness is because we don't want to put pressure on that dog's neck because right. the dogs can get quite strong at pulling, especially german shepherd um regardless of whether they got arthritis they still like to put themselves in four-wheel drive we don't want to put any pressure on that, that neck that throat area but we don't want one because it's for the dog's obviously well-being but two if that dog's pulled on that neck by accident and corrected adding a negative into trailing and you'll see very very quickly that dog will not want to do it because there will be what they see as an aversive um, yeah. i don't use harnesses with my big sheps they're not they've never been trained to use harness in their life first i put harness on it is thick but we use a harness for man trailing and i purely use it for man trailing um because that, that's what that harness is for my springers always wear a harness, but I use a different harness for man trailing because yeah. um, we're man trailing. Don't drag me on my normal walks. What nice on your harness? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we always encourage a harness use. It's, it's unless there's an absolute your dog has a severe spinal issue that, and a harness would affect them that we may use a collar. But even then, I would I wouldn't personally. Um, go down that route because there's too much pressure at these dogs going at speed on their neck you're just going to cause damage and we just yeah. don't do it off lead because it's just there's no way we can maintain health and safety with a dog thundering around doing what it wants um yeah but th what we do is we use them on the long line and we're using five to ten meters a line so we're not directly behind those dogs we're just following them on the lead for health and safety really yeah and that, like you say, actually, um, when they're getting a positive experience, so even a dog that's never had a harness on before, if they have it on and then they're doing something fun that they love, it becomes they have that positive association with it. And then actually they want to wear it because they know they're going to do something that they love. Yeah. So even if you have a dog that's never worn a harness, it doesn't mean you can't do man training. It's just I'm sure the instructors would give you advice and help yeah. on, on how to, to um, get a dog using a harness as well, wouldn't they? Definitely. We say we tailor everything to each individual girl dog. We might be working with a group, but every dog is worked individually. So we can say, okay, we need to put a harness on, we're gonna use this kind of harness. Most instructors have got 
at 1500 harnesses in their, their van for dogs to try um right. and because it's they say the, the action of using a nose is so positive and as long as that harness isn't restricting them there isn't a negative involved the only reason it'd be negative is that dogs had a negative in a past with a harness and um, yes. what i have done with dogs that find a little bit uncomfortable or are quite sensitive is we do loads of putting a harness on go get your dinner put the harness on oh my goodness and just loads and loads of positive reinforcement to say look if the harness goes on there's going to be food or there's going to be playtime or there's going to be absolutely at the end of this so yeah. my, my shepherds had never worn harnesses i'd never needed mm. them with them so when i popped them on my long coat white Gemma shepherd who was like get off me on a daily basis um he was like you must be joking i'm not wearing this contraption but once we got to it he really forgot he was wearing a harness he, yeah he he didn't fuss with it anymore at all yeah it's yeah it's all it's all about positive experience isn't it um and what we're going to go on to now which Definitely. may just help with a couple of these other questions um i've got a question here from fiona who said she did an introductory course with her eight-year-old greyhound and he just refused to trail um it was very wet and windy but have you got any tips for trying to get him to engage if we were able to try again and so i just want to talk about a little bit about how if somebody's never done man trailing before how would they start where would they look what should they do to look into it and like fiona's asked are there any tips for dogs that don't automatically take to it but you feel like they've just had a bit of a dodgy experience that first time are there any tips to try and get them doing it again yeah so the best way to get them to well the way to get them to is attend an introduction so all of our instructors across the country i think we have I think 66 cuts of shutters across the country now. We're starting to fill out the UK. There's a few uh, blank spots, but we're getting there. We would have had a few more this year, but we kept having to push courses back because of COVID. Um, get yourself an induction course, one of our instructors. The, 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 the sessions are always kept to a maximum of six dogs. These last about three hours. And what this session is to teach you about man trailing and teach your dogs about man trailing. Um, the way to get into those and then so once you've done that you can then join classes advanced weekends there's, there's lots of avenues to go down but every instructor then follow on sessions for you and your dog An introduction course gives you not only the practical but the theory behind it. if you've got a dog that's unsure on the day sometimes being part of a group doesn't suit them sometimes training for people they don't know doesn't suit them what i've done with dogs so it's like you know, greyhounds are you know they're not well known for their nose but they do have one and they can use it is to go home and do things like hiding yourself to so put the dog in one room run off with some food and then release the dog if someone's got hold of them um dogs will always trail for their owners better and what we can do on an introduction course i've done it a few times with more nervous dogs i've actually done it with my own shepherd because he was so low motivation to man trail because he's just a low motivation german shepherd um is what we call a flip the dog and the owner runs off and i've never not had a dog find its owner um right. and because some dogs aren't up to trying new things they're naturally pessimistic they're like no the person's got my food not interested not enough reward for me i'd rather get in the car where it's flipping warm and have a cup of tea so when we flip the dog and go oh, okay our hand or you the dog goes hold on a minute value is on the move i want to follow that thing and what yeah. you'll find with greyhounds once they get into it and that prey drive naturally kicks in they go oh bunny right got this um sometimes with them you need to use a, not food but actually a toy on a rope that can really get the dog going because again it's tipping into that prey drive more um mm. but yeah the only way to get into man training uk is with one of our instructors on an introduction course but introduction course sets you up to work with any man training uk uk instructor in the country because we all train in the same way massive uniform way we train and it means that our students work with all different instructors and trainers. Um, we have lots of students that go to different instructors um, one of the instructors down in Pembrokeshire, she gets a lot of people come to her on holiday. They go on holiday, do a man trailing with her on the holiday. The dog's absolutely pantsed. It's brilliant. Um, but no, I would, with your greyhound, I definitely have a look at what the best reward for that dog is. Obviously, it was a bit wet and windy and they're not, you know, greyhounds don't. Um, and work learning to find you first or another family member they trust and then start to put a stranger in. Because a lot of times it can be uh, this, this weird person's run off my food. 
you I don't I'm not interested in what you're doing because you're not interesting to me um yeah yeah, yeah Fiona's written oh, thank Fiona, you I just read Fiona's other comment uh Fiona come in yeah, so she's just said <laughs> I think he might have he, he might have trailed me rather than a stranger. I wish I'd thought of that or the instructor had. Everyone else, oh, no, poor, poor, poor little greyhounds. Everyone else got a certificate, but I didn't because we didn't actually trail. Do you want to well, come trailing with I, me? Um. <laughs> <laughs> go to Wales and go and see Catherine. Um, yeah, definitely try it again because it does sound amazing. Yeah. And I love yeah, well, I love so you can see me. <laughs> I, I love the most is, is that you can go and sit and have a beer while a dog is trying to find you. So it's like a win-win for the dog and for, for people as well. This sounds like, you know, a perfect yeah, combination. It's, it's really. the most amazing sport out there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, Fiona, I'm, I'm I would, if you've really. got family members that will give you a hand. Yeah, if you've got family members that will give you a hand, definitely get people that dogs trust to find first. Um, it can be a massive trust issue with a lot of the greyhounds and like the lurchers because it's not natural for them to find strangers. They're not a super in your face breed like a Labrador or a German Shepherd. So when they haven't got that confidence, we need to make sure that dog understands the game before we start adding the, the, the stranger danger in basically. Um, so definitely have a look at that. But you, you're more than welcome to drop me a message personally and we can have a good chat about plan of action for Formed. that's great i'm going to put at the end of this i'm going to put links to um catherine and to man trading for people if they want to to have a look more into it and we've got quite a few people saying uh that they love man trailing we've got carly here uh love man trailing caden is fast asleep after his one trail earlier um jerry moss this is uh, jerry moss great great <laughs> chat catherine lovely explanations from jk9 another man training uk instructor and addict um so i just just wanted to touch on one of yeah, the definitely well, get jerry things. she's lovely oh um just with the so you were talking about man training just then um with fiona's fiona's greyhound about doing it inside do you is there ever a time when you do do a, a man trail indoors rather than outdoors like it would if it was a really horrendous i don't know situation or um yeah do you have groups where you think you're not confident enough to go outside we're going to do it indoors we don't tend to do it indoors often because actually you get more trouble with scent so the scent doesn't yeah. settle very well and you tend to find that it's very high traffic so say you trailed through a building like you know even like a house or something there's a lot of settled scent and what i find a lot of dogs come through and go whoa there's a lot of sniff here and they don't have to focus on the trail and also finding a, a big, big enough i've done it through a couple of doggy daycares um mm. of course we did it through the kennel club building at the stone leaf it's quite fun but oh, it's yeah. actually harder to trail for a building than it is outside the only time i wouldn't trail outside is if it was absolutely blowing a gale and absolutely pouring it down purely because the scent moves too much um, yeah. But there's no reason why on a slightly a little bit windy day that you wouldn't just trail normally. 99% of the time trailing our shutters do, and I know I do, is outside because we're having to do 200 meter trails. There's just, unless we can get into some fantastic buildings, we yeah. the trails through um, one of the train museums down south. And that's amazing. She trails past all these buildings full of trains. Um, it's Oh, castles. Castles are a good one if we can get into castles. Yeah. It's harder um, for the dogs because the scent doesn't it, it moves differently and you'd find that it settles in odd places, uh, whereas outside the scent tends to just stick to vegetation and stays really well there. Right. But Yeah, that makes it, sense. It, you can trail anywhere on any surface. Yeah. So can I just ask you a little bit more about the introductory courses? Because we've had a couple of comments, people saying, oh, yeah, this looks really good. I'd like to get into this. Um, so an introductory course, is that just a, is that a couple of sessions on different days or is it an introductory course all on the same day? How, do, how does that work? Do people have to come back? So it's it's a one three hour block session. It's usually three hours, depending on how much your instructor waffles in between. Um, <laughs> it's It's three hours and what we do is we do you sh we, have, we have one he's lovely and he, he's a fantastic instructor i don't know if he's watching or not um but i think he managed to push it on to four and a half hours because he was busy chatting <laughs> um wow it's, it's half an hour of theory so quick minutes, half an hour of this is what man trailing is like so kind of what i'm explaining now this is how it works this is how we're gonna do it and 
we'll build everything in theory and then we start to get dogs out working because the easiest way to learn how to do it is to learn to do it as you go um yeah. so what we do with that session is your dog gets three main trails throughout it so we tend to do four sorry five to six dogs introduction so you're you're going to run your dog three times and then you're going to run for other people's dogs as well if possible so you're going to chance to be the handler you get a chance to be the trail runner you get a chance to observe all the time and you get to see all different dogs work and it's really fun for the dogs um and they time for and not every dog is comfortable with that what i tend to say if a dog's not sure about being left the vehicle bring along a partner and do swaps and stints in the vehicle um we, the reason we encourage the dog to stay in the vehicle in between trailing is if the dogs are too distracting for each other if so the dog's trying to find a person 99 percent of dogs go oh, look a dog and they'll just go yeah. and stare at the dog i'll go and make yeah. friends rather than trail the person mm. and they'll go oh fair game um and just upset everybody so we do encourage dogs to be in vehicles in between sessions uh, in between trails but it's three hours of your time it's usually like a saturday morning that most people tend to trail and then once you've done that that makes you eligible to go and do trailing classes with that instructor now it isn't a set six week course what it is is we do sessions this day time and you can come along and book in if it's space or we might do it a different day on a, diff a different time on a different day. I personally trail the evenings, some weekday day times and a week. I might do a, a Saturday night at six o'clock, a Tuesday at seven o'clock in the evening. Um, we in the dark because otherwise we don't get anything done. We trail in the rain. Yeah. Um, I might do a daytime on a Tuesday somewhere quiet. Um, so it's not a set six week course and i find lots of people go okay i'm gonna do two sessions this month i might do next month because of my ship pack and stuff like that yeah. some people are there every it's everything's different yeah so that's great because it's something that you can come in drop in and out of um and if you yeah if you're unwell one week or your dog's not feeling it then obviously you don't you don't have to do it which is which is great. Um, I'm just looking at my little questions here as well. Yeah, so with the commitment side of things, um, it, it it sounds amazing as well because, like you say, you don't you're not committing to a, a year where you're having to come in, um, you know, every, every week to to do that. Um, I just wanted to go back to uh, there was a comment there from Fiona. I just wanted to read that as well. Yeah, she said she's going to drag her hubby along next time, but just going into lockdown, so just don't know when there'll be further intro courses. Yeah, so we were talking about this before we came live, actually. So um, Catherine is based in Wales, so she is now able to to do this again. Um, obviously, in England at the moment, we're not able to do this, but hopefully um, when lockdown is finished, it, it will be up and running again. Would you imagine that to be the case, Catherine? Yes. Yeah. It's man train is one of the few things that we can get absolutely cracking on straight away because it's outdoors 99% of the time. It's socially distant design. You're never really going to be within two meters of somebody else because you're not, you know, you're not going in person. You don't need to interact with people physically. You're only handling your own dogs. You're not touching other people's dogs. And you're lit the only time that you will pass each other is when you pass the food pots over. And we're just really conscious about disinfecting pots, wearing gloves and stuff, stuff like that. It's actually a fantastic you're, and you're not touching things it's not like sports with the same equipment or running over the same ground or actually being indoors yeah. um so a lot of instructors have already got dates out for introduction courses in december there's a really good right. um facebook group that's man training man training association uk and our instructors tend to put their uh, courses on there um but i know i mean i've got two introduction courses running in december um waiting for England to come out of lockdown. <laughs> mm. um, but fingers crossed. It's, yeah. Band training is fairly unknown in North Wales. So we're just waiting for everybody to kind of get hooked on man trailing up here because there's no, there's not, I was the first instructor and a couple more of people have got a few more ready to do the course. We're just kind of like monopolizing on the in North Wales at the moment. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's really good. And so you you said at the beginning you've only been doing for eighteen months. Is that as long as it's been going in the UK then? It's been going since two thousand and fifteen, but it's really rocketed in the last two and a half years. Um, Lisa, who who created Man Trailing UK, currently lives in Germany, but she she came over to the UK and realised it was nothing like it. She'd done it in Germany with her own dogs. She started with a Belgian Malinois that was a little bit reactive um and 
she came over and realized that no one's doing it so she started doing it then kind of realized that hold a minute more people need to do with this because she was getting fucked up so she wrote the instructor course and completely masterminded the whole thing and basically it's just gone from strength to strength every year we're doing more and more courses we have more and more instructors we have so much demand crofts two years ago or not just even last year so in 2019 people coming over and go what's man trailing mm. this year at crofts 90% of people going where's my nearest instructor how do I get into man trailing people were kind of learning what it is yeah and it's just it's snowballed um you, honestly once you can't hear with demand i cannot physically keep up with demand of how many people want to do man trailing at the moment right. um, i know our shutters can't because it's just so fun and once you're into it you're hooked yeah yeah i mean it does sound do, do you are you finding that um because people are more aware of it now that you are getting more arthritic dogs coming through as people realize that it is actually a really good sport for for arthritic dogs i get a lot of ex agility dogs coming through mm -hmm. um a lot of ex sports dogs um a lot because they're hitting to the point where they're getting six or seven an injury is happening they're having to retire but these dogs are so bright and so smart and actually their owners are like no i can't let my dog just take i need to do something with it and they're looking around and it's you know what do i do that's high impact on the brain but low impact on the body and i it is now turning that we're finding that more older dogs are joining us it used to be people with visualers and labradors and the high energy mm -hmm. that were doing it but now probably half my client base are older dogs uh, in some cases when we're doing intros because they've realized that it's just amazing and like i say the lack as an owner you don't need to do loads and loads of commitment you need to come to training yeah. sessions or you need to find friends that are hiding bushes for you um yeah. And it's not much of a hardship when you're like, can you hide in the bush with a cup of tea? I'll come find you with a piece of cake in half an hour. It's yeah, it's not uh, bad. And you don't need equipment and facilities. You don't. You can literally yeah. rock up somewhere, hide. I mean, don't trespass, but you can hide yeah. somewhere and <laughs> um, and and you know, work your dog, but work your dog that in a low impact way. Yeah. I mean, we've got a comment here from Catherine who says, as a yeah. young, very arthritic dog who had to retire from agility very young, man training has been brilliant for Eddie and gives us the opportunity to work as a team too. And I think that's really important. So you're getting, so it's great exercise for, yeah. for your dog, but it's also building that relationship between you and your dog as well, isn't it? And when you want, you know that you can do something special and it's yeah. just your time. That is something in everyday life, in normal life, um, you know, everyone is so busy. So it's lovely to have something that you both enjoy and that will build that relationship as well. Yeah, what's really good about it is the fact that you have to put all your trust in the dog. You Once we get into it, you don't know where the person's gone. I'll hide somebody and I won't tell you. And you've got to trust your dog completely. And the map people that go, oh, I don't know. And the dog always gets it right. I mean, the dog is 100% correct. The dogs are never wrong. But the amount mm. of owners that start to fluster and the dog gets it right and they're like, oh, my goodness, my dog is actually amazing. And you, see, you see yeah. the change in their – yeah, they do. It's, um, and you see the change in their their dynamic together as a, as a team because you yeah. have to put your trust in it. A lot of other sports and stuff you do your dog are dictating things. We're going, right, right jump there or come to me. Man trailing, you go, right, and the dog goes, oh, my goodness, you, you want me to do whatever I want to do? I can do this. Yeah. There's that confidence thing. And it really changes up. And I guarantee that people that do man trail and get into it have a completely different relationship with their dog because you have to put that trust in that your dog's mm. getting it right. And it makes you read your dog better. And all these subtle little things that your dog does, you'll suddenly go, oh, I know what that is because you just get this different kind of bond. I don't know whether yeah. it's just me thinking about it, but I see it. I see it definitely with my own dogs massively yeah. and i see it with my clients dogs and i've seen my clients go from strength to strength with their dogs and they've had difficult pasts together and always been at loggerheads and suddenly started man trailing and things have changed mm. Mm. yeah we were talking again before we came on here that um, um catherine is a behaviorist as mm. well and um, so you were saying you know that for some dogs that do have behavior issues man training it is it, has changed them around you know they, they've um 
they've become better, their behavior has improved because they've just got this outlet to be able to be themselves and spend time with this one person and it's really helped. So there's, it, it helps on so many levels, doesn't it? It's such a great sport for, for lots of different reasons. Yeah, I find it fantastic. I've got an Alapaha bulldog um, and he, he come from a just a really crap situation where he was part of a drug seizure and he's he's very nervous of people. He's very nervous of dogs and he's only eight months old, but natural genetics say, oh, you don't know what to do. And he has a bite history and he won't go up to people by choice. And if he does, he freaks himself out, proceeds to have a panic attack and then run away um or attempts you know used to attempt to bite we started man trailing i just started doing it. i thought oh we'll see what he's like he's a ball breeder he won't do it very much stereotypical and i shouldn't have been because he took to it like a duck to water i've never seen a puppy pick up so i know he's my dog and you know <laughs> my dog's amazing but he picked up quicker than my springer really? um he will now with my man training go up to people take the food off them no stress no 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 scary he just goes oh hello person takes the food and walks away it's completely positive for him and since i've done training with him i've been able to take him to situations with crowds of people i've been able to get him to meet people stressing and i honestly put it down to man training gave him that step between Confident. oh the person's bribing you and the person's positive it, it just completely mm -hmm. changed how your people and a huge difference to how he interacts and i think it's it's sped up what we're doing you know eight months old now he's confident to meet people i didn't expect him to get there his history was so complex and he's he's so he was so badly damaged when i got him that i didn't know where i get him yeah i can't believe how friendly he is now it, it's just a huge difference and i do i'll put it down to man training just because i'm a man training instructor i'm putting it down to that because i saw the results within two or three early sessions with him got you going strangers on by choice and he's like yeah we're friends now, guys. Yeah. And he, you know, he wants people to fuss him because he wants them to join in when he's found them. He's like, I found you. Let's have a that's party. Amazing. And it's yeah. it's a big thing for him. Yeah, that's that. I mean, um, it sounds so amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, we've just got another question um from Amanda here. And um, so she's just saying, uh, what minimum age to start, mm -hmm. please? My three dogs love it. Just retired my oldest dog from Canicross, and it's great to feel like we are competing again. Um, so Catherine was saying earlier that really you can start any age. You want to make sure that um, the dog is vaccinated. But she was also also saying, Catherine, about you need to make sure that dog is confident enough as well. So you're not chucking it into a really scary situation that it can't deal with. But basically, just remind us, Catherine, you just said at any age, really, as long as they're confident enough to do it and fully vaccinated. Any age. Was that right? Yeah. Yeah, vaccination is because we work a group of dogs and we're generally working in a place where there are dogs about a public area or like, a, you know, a, a private dog area. Um, and so, excuse me, um, I, that confident puppy, if you've got a like really Larry visual puppy, yourself, everybody, great. You can start on the second of those vaccines vaccinations are able to the second that puppy is able to go out with vaccinations if you've got a little bit of a timid german shepherd who's not sure um i would definitely get that dog's confidence a little bit just purely because what we're asking them to do um and to go and follow people is a little bit scary for young puppies that aren't really sure of the world especially in a new environment and what we don't want to do is create a negative of man trailing what i tend mm. to do with young puppies is speak um sorry speak to your instructor your instructor and ask them about what to do or get friends to hide uh, or definitely get in touch with a, a trainer or behaviourist to get the puppy's confidence up and build it as much as possible um, where needed. That's great. We've got another question here um, from Andy um, saying, Hi, Catherine. I do a lot of tracking with my German Shepherd, but have only recently heard of man training. Could you explain the difference? I don't know the answer to this, but could you explain the difference between tracking and man training, please? My goodness, Andy, I can see you have white German Shepherds. You have three I, in your photo. I'm a man. I, I love you already. I've got three. Um, so what it is, is it is a really good question. Lots of people go, oh, I've done tracking. So tracking is teaching your dog to follow a specific trail. And that scent isn't, isn't a unique scent. It's not a specific person. It's just our trail has trodden. So generally we're tracking, and I might get tracking people tell me off for this and say it's wrong. But the way I put it is tracking following really specific like straight lines turns left and right and then have to follow that 
that's and find like the articles on it and it's very it's a lot more precise and it's a training it's a trained exercise a dog wouldn't naturally stick its nose right to the ground and chill you know like a line like that man trailing is finding a specific scent now that scent could be in the air the trail isn't always straight loads of dogs take shortcuts and we're following a scent that's drifting so say the trail is the person's gone the straight line what you'll find is a dog will trail left and right a little bit and a bit squiggly over here and a bit there and they'll get to a to b but it's not precise it's just following wherever that scent has gone whereas tracking specific footsteps and very specific the dog must turn when the dog or the trail went left whereas man trailing if the person's gone round the corner left twice as long as the dog gets made to be they might go 50 yards out of you know out of the yeah. where the tra trail is in our mind because scent drift much the scent might be stuck to it sticks to, um vegetation best and anything damp so if it's a damp tree in the corner the, the dog may go by the tree that's 50 yards out of where where the person's ran that's where the yeah. scent stuck so right. um i find dogs that have tracked first man trailing very well dogs that have done man trailing first and try and do tracking struggle because oh. they go no this is boring now i want to run around and find a scent yeah. so if anybody wants to do like working trials with a dog always do tracking first it's just harder to do it the other way around um but if you've done it with your dog your dogs will pick up man trailing almost instantly because they already knew what it's just a more free version really yeah i hope yeah. that makes sense <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that made sense to me. Thank you for answering that. Um, I've just got a question about man training. So once you've done it, is it something that they that you have competitions in, or is this like a fun sport that you just come along and do? It? Are there any sort of um, groups that do that compete? Yeah, we don't do competitions at the moment. One because it's very new, and two because it's so hard to kind of score yeah. because what if say you laid out 15 trails it's separate they'd all be the same length they'd all the same amount of distractions on and what's distracting to one dog is another one trail has a bird on it how are you going to score people from down what we do have um instead is levels to achieve so there's three levels at the moment and we have little bookets okay. you can fill out let me just grab one actually um so that's a trusty book so we have uh it's a camera when i see we've got cameras um we have log books and when these log books we, we log our trails and how we're doing we get our instructors to sign off and tell us you know i oh, need to work on this next time you want to do a level one assessment means that you your dog is capable of doing trail length 200 to 400 meters length that's been aged for half an hour so someone's been sat on half an hour and the, the handler so you with the dog doesn't know the person's hidden which is called a single blind and once you okay. pass that, you have a certificate and a rosette and a badge and you can tell everybody um, and then you can build towards your level twos and threes. I'm actually just in the middle of writing um, some achievement badges to do within each level. So progression that people can do to achieve in order to basically have some little wins. You know, there's little yeah. things like how have you done so many different kinds of starts and things like that. So we can't do a competition at the moment. And I look like we're going to be doing competitions like with that because it's very very hard to kind of fairly uh, assess people but we do yeah. do these levels we do do um the badges in between and a lot of our instructors do kind of like mini sessions and fun stuff between them um with different okay. things but yeah building towards your assessment is what most people do brilliant that's excellent. Um, we did have a comment here as well earlier on. I just wanted to share. So this is this isn't just a UK thing. This mm. is um, this is worldwide, isn't it? There was somebody here, Santos. Um, hello from Spain. We are we run a man trading school and happy to listen to, happy to listen to your chat. Um, so it seems like it's going on all over the place. I know it. Where, which country did it originate in? Do you, I can't remember where I read about that. Um. Oh, I don't know where it originated. The oh. method we use is from America, but yeah, I think England's like the last place to do it. So oh, is it? We are, we are so behind because um, a lot of places use it operationally. So man trailing in America, they use the bloodhounds to find lost kids and stuff like that, um, oh, or missing bodies. 
or criminals and a lot of Europe use those if something's happened they won't bring a police dog in they'll pull in the man trailing team to find missing people um, right. all over Europe so I think actually the UK are one of the last people to kind of pick up man trailing which is really odd because we are um sorry got a bone uh, we are kind of really doggy but yeah, yeah. so with, which when Lisa came over from man trailing Bay, she was so surprised that nobody was really doing it over yeah. here uh, it has picked up since she started that business. There are other man training organizations out there now, but man training UK is the biggest um, yeah. out there. And we have the most, we have the most instructors. We have um, a very set standard of how our instructors are. Um, mm. So we, we can maintain a really good standard. But yeah, um, I I wouldn't, I don't know where it originated, but it yeah. is American and in lots of Europe. Well, there's a lot of teams in like Germany, France, Spain, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, another comment. Um, when it's written in France maybe. too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's such a such yeah. a great thing. I'm so pleased that we had you on, Catherine, to learn about this. And uh, certainly, something as a vet, I will be talking to, to some of my clients about when they come in. Um, you know, not necessarily just with arthritic dogs, but with all dogs. It sounds like a a brilliant sport. Um. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, what I'm going to do, as I say, is I'll put some links uh, on the on the Canine Arthritis Management page uh, with the with this Facebook Live, mm -hmm. and so please do have a look. And as I said earlier, there is a video. Um, so please do go and have a look at the website, and you can have a look at that. And Catherine kindly said earlier, you know, if anyone's got any any questions, please do do contact her um, and if you have any questions after just pop them down in the comments and I can always contact Catherine afterwards and and get those answers for you so thank you so much have a great evening everybody and we will see you again soon bye thank you bye